three cup finals. That's how Leamington need to treat their remaining fixtures if they want to be playing in the National League North Division next season. Lying just above the drop zone and with only one win in their last five games, Paul Holler will be looking for his players to step up against promotion seeking Chorley tonight. The visitors are fighting for a playoff place as they lie in sixth position, but are looking over their shoulder at the likes of York and Bradford Park Avenue, who are right on their heels, also seeking a way up into the National League. A Leamington win tonight will see the Brakes jump four places into 15th, but with a Chorley side unbeaten in five, it's looking to be a mammoth of a task if Paul Holland's men want to take three points from this one. Leamington make one change to the side that played out a 0-0 stalemate against Curzon and Ashton on Saturday, as Kieran Dunbar comes back into the side, whilst Ahmed Obeng drops to the bench. For the visitors then, it's Matt Irwin in goal, Matt Hughes, Lee Molyneux, Andy Teague, Scott Leather and Adam Anson in the five of the back, Josh O'Keefe, Dale Whitman and Jake Cottrell of three midfield, with Marcus Carver and Alex Newby up front. Alongside me tonight is Callum Cross. Callum, uh, Leamington lie two points by the relegation places. How vital would three points be here tonight for the club's future? I'd say it's more than vital, Matt. Uh, I'm sure Paul Holloran will have his players fired up for this one, and three points is all they should be thinking about for this massive game. Weds with the flick on. And Doe's on the ball here. Here's Matt Dodds on the right hand side. Dodds! Chose to take it uh, first time without taking a touch then. I think he just needed a touch to set himself there, Callum. Yeah, it was good build-up play. Unfortunate with the shot, he's just got under it a bit, but on another day, you never know. Hughes. O'Keefe. He's in Doe. But just muscled out of it there by uh, Scott Leather, and here comes Lee Molyneux down the left-hand side. He's got Carver in front of him. Carver faced by Jamie Hood here. Finds his left back once again. Delivers a ball into the area. Whitman was there. Blazed his shot over the bar. Got clear of his marker there. Did uh, Dale Whitman, but just uh, needed a bit more composure when it came to the finish. Dunbar back to his left back, Goodger. And he'll uh, assess his options before firing into Indo. His Gittins, he's got Junior English on his right hand side. Chooses to opt back to Goodger. Edwards. Dunbar. Good just made the run here. In towards the back post. It's over everyone, and uh, Lee Molyneux should uh, marshal this out of play. But once again, good intricate play by Leamington down that left hand side. Out the line towards Dodd. Tries to flick on, but it's worked in his favour. Matt Dodd. It's faced by Cottrell. It's brought down by Jake Cottrell. And. Uh, Jake Cottrell will be the first name in the uh, referee's book this evening on 22 minutes. You can see they're nervous about Matt Dodd. Every time he gets the ball, it's kicking away at him. And they've finally got probably what they deserved in the book in there after he could look quite good on the break. You do feel if Leamington are going to score from open play, it's going to be down that right-hand side through that man, Matt Dodd. It's floating towards the back post. Jamie Hood was there, just couldn't get a touch. I think it was taken away from him by a Chorley player. towards Edwards. Is English on the turn. Good effort by Junior English there. O'Keefe misses his pass but gets away with it. Koch with a great ball to Newby. James Mace challenging. Newby still gets the ball into the area. There's O'Keefe. Just slipped at the vital moment there I think. Uh, Josh O'Keefe and Breeden was able to comfortably catch that. What's an opportunity? That was for Chorley. Anywhere but where he put it. And the net might have been nestling. Early scares in the second half for Leamington. As a newbie got away down that right-hand side, but O'Keefe just couldn't provide the finish. And uh, Leamington to look, make, to look another change here. The uh, Ahmed Oben getting ready on the, uh, on the bench for the breaks. And uh, it was Hood with a, a header back inside, but Lemson seems to have got away with it. Here's Newby with a long range effort. Oh! 
And uh, looks like Obain's coming over to that left-hand side with Dunbar coming to the right. Here's Whitman. O'Keefe couldn't quite take that in his stride and uh, James Mace will clear up. Teague lets that bounce, allowing Ndo away in here. Here's Ndo, holds the ball up well, finds Obeng the substitute. I'm at Obeng. Shots just blocked there. Already we see the, uh, the, the wide presence that Obeng brings to the Leamington team. Here's Cottrell. Carver is Newby on the left-hand side. Finds the ball back to Carver who continues his run. This is dangerous for Chorley. Still Carver now. Here's Ale Newby. It's a deflected shot, but uh, Breeding was level to it, down to his right-hand side. Teague. This turns out to be a fantastic ball to Hughes. If he can keep it in, he can indeed, the right-back. Hughes now. He's got... He's got Leather for company. Leather, the centre back with a drive. Almost caught Tony Breeden out on his left hand post. Scott Leather, of all people, the uh, Chorley centre back with the low drive. And uh, now Chorley have a corner. It's whipped in then. There's Teague. Just over the bar. Free header for Andy Teague. Was left alone by the Leamington defenders. Just got under it there, Callum. Yeah, certainly. Great effort, good chance. He's been winning the headers all day at the back. He's, he's come up for a corner. And to be fair, he could be, could be doing better, but he has got under it. It's up towards Edwards. He wins the flick on. But uh, Molyneux level to it to clear. Here's Ndo. He's got Obeng here. Goes down to the challenge. And Scott Simpson points the spot. And Leamington have a penalty here, just before the 70 minute mark. It was Ndo with great hold up play, played the ball into Ahmed Obeng, and he went down on the challenge of a Shorey defender, and Tony Breeden's made his way up here to take the spot kick. Now, Leamington have the chance here to take a vital 1 0 lead. It'll be Tony Breeden, the captain. He stepped up here, Tony Breeden. And he bullets it home, Tony Breeden. Into the roof of the net to break the deadlock here at the Phillips 66 Community Stadium. And what a goal that could prove to be in the relegation battle. Never in doubt. Tony Breeden smashing it at home down the middle of the goal. Keeper, no chance. And the deadlock has been broken here. It's Leamington 1, surely nil. And you have to say, it's been deserved by Leamington in the second half. And Leamington needs to keep their heads screwed on for these remaining 20 minutes. Is Edwards. Ahmed Obeng can't get his touch, forced wide, but uh, he's still got it here. He's faced by Anson. There's Gittins. Finds his way out of a challenge. Gittins! Deflected! There's a do again, she can't get his touch. And it's cleared away by Chorley. Agonising stuff for Leamington. Don't think Ndo was expecting the ball back there. She couldn't get his touch right from Gittins. Deflected effort. It's Owen then. Flicked on, is Newby, is Carver, can surely break Leamington Hearts here. Carver finds Cotter on the edge of the area, goes down under the challenge, and it'll be a free kick to Chorley, about 20, 25 yards from goal. 
just as the uh, fourth official's board is going up to mark six minutes of added time. I mean, we had the injury to we had the injury to Scott Leather, but I'm not sure it deems six minutes, Callum. No, you're certainly right. This is a cracking chance for Chorley to equalise. Leamington have all but four outfield players in the wall. Be Molyneux and Newby over the ball then. For Chorley. It'll be Lee Molyneux straight into the wall. And there's Hughes to clip. Recycle this. Deeds be blocked off by Dunbar. Be another surely set piece, same distance from goal on the right hand side. Nice. Be Lee Molyneux right. to strike once again. Right Hughes has made the outside run. Right Be Lee Molyneux. <laughs> Scuffed his lines there, Lee Molyneux. It was high, wide, and not handsome, Callum. Certainly wasn't. It's just what this Leamington side need. Here's Cottrell for Chorley. One last throw of the dice for the Magpies. And Doe gets their first. Here comes Obeng down the left hand side. Able to stretch his legs here. Ahmed Obeng. He's faced by Anson. He's got Gittins in front of him. Obeng goes alone. Pursued by Hughes. Goes down under the challenge. Nothing given. It's a Chorley throw in. One minute, 20 seconds for Lewington to hold on here. Goodyear with the demanding is Ndo. Ndo's onside here, Daniel Ndo. Goes down to the challenge. It's a penalty to Lewington. I don't believe it, Callum. Lewington have a penalty in the final minute of the game to really put this game to bed. It was Ndo through the middle of the two centre-backs and with a combination of both of them brought down the Lewington striker. It was almost an exact replica of the first penalty. I don't think we'll see Tony Breedy taking this one. And it's about to go from bad to worse for Chorley here as uh, Matt Hughes has been sent for an early shower I think for chat back to the referee Scott Simpson. And it'll be Callum Gittins with the chance. It'll be Callum Gittins then from the spot. Game, set and match, Leamington FC. That is a vital three points for the break. And all the players rush over to the centre midfielder. You can see what it means to these players. This takes them that step closer to staying up. It was a calm and composed penalty from Callum Gittins given the circumstances. And Leamington now hold a two goal lead. And I think we'll hear the final whistle as soon as we kick off Callum. Yeah, it's hugely disappointing for Chorley. They needed this playoff spot. But the breaks have come out and they do what they do against the big sides. And that's take points. It'll be uh, Alex Newby making way for Josh Gregory. And uh, surely kick back off here. But Scott Simpson blows the full time whistle. And it's a massive, massive three points for the breaks as they move five points clear from the relegation places. It was two penalties in the end that separated the two sides. It's finished here, Leamington two, surely nil. And what a win that is for the breaks in their quest for survival.
Tony, uh, first off, just how big is that win for Leamington FC? Yeah, it's, to be fair, it's a massive win, but we've got to prepare properly for Saturday because that it isn't 100% safe yet, so until it's safe, I'm not really going to get too excited. It's, it's three points and it's a massive, massive leap, but until we're safe, like I say, I'm not going to get too excited. And uh, you made no mistake with that bullet of a penalty. Uh, just uh, run us through your thought process when you ran the length of the pitch to take it. Uh, well, initially, it was uh, it was over to Gitto. Gitto was going to be the penalty taker, but looked over to the bench and the gaffer's pointing at me, so I thought, right then. Uh, Get it high enough so the keeper can't. I just think if you get the ball high, strike through it. If the keeper saves it, it's a great save. So, so Paul, a massive three points, uh, putting your side five points clear of the relegation places. Just give us your initial thoughts on the game. Not delighted uh, because we we knew these two home games we needed at least one win. Um, I think listen, Saturday was as poor a game as we've had here this year. Um, I think obviously I've said it again. The obviously the Thursday night. The sun beam and it sort of took it out of us a bit. We just we plenty of effort there. We, you know, we just lack quality. I think when you seen Junior down in this corner on Saturday afternoon, who's probably got zero body fat, and he got cramped twice, and he's putting in tackles in the 90th minute mean, just to 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 make sure that we, we get something out of the game Saturday. I think a little recovery has helped us. But listen, if if you play Chorley, you, you basically got to go to war. They're such so good at what they do. Um, you know, they're physically strong all over the pitch they set plays are on a button you know and they're, they're really well I sort of sort of want us to aspire to them really um, they set high standards and every time we play them they've brushed us aside so tonight was um, we've really um, really stood up and be strong tonight and we looked a threat all night it was difficult, the pitch was difficult obviously uh, the manner of the game but listen yeah you know, to, to sort of get to 48 points with two to go, it's you know really we've we've virtually got two feet over the line. So it's uh, it's a great feeling. And you, you touched on those uh, two to go. It could be a tricky run in uh, with York uh, and Salford City to come. Just how much does this win here tonight mean for this football club? Well, it was massive. I think you know we put ourselves in a good position coming into the last sort of half a dozen games, and we let some points slip at Bradford. We let points slip at Telford. Obviously, not winning on. Uh, Saturday, so the pressure just keeps building, and um, you know, obviously, and teams around us picking up points. I mean, you know, the, the, the form of you know, the you know, games was a little run, and you know, Telford run recently, FC United, Curzon, you know, every, you know, it's the teams, the teams at the bottom are sort of probably top of the form table. So it's it's really tough, and it's you know, people want to play in this division, people want to stop in this division, and um, you know, I think that's five or six clean sheets on the bounce there. Um, and that's held us. You've always got a chance, you know. Sometimes you work out, you know, are we going to go and outplay some of these sides, or can we, you know, put a really good, hard-working structure in place, do the basics well, have some pace in wide areas. And not, young Danny's done really well since he's coming on that high line. I'm delighted, delighted for everyone tonight. It's, um, people who watch us regularly realise that it's a tough old league this one. And, um, and apart from two or three blips, we've done all right. We've done all right. And you're coming open-eyed. I think you, you, people are well aware we're probably one of the smallest clubs, and if not the smallest. So, you know, when we, we've, we've had some good days. And, and tonight was, you know, it's, you know, when you think those players, how many games they've played and what the, you know, the, the Thursday nights we've had. It's nice to have a Thursday night at home. It is an advantage, there's no doubt about it. So, listen, we're absolutely, uh, we're, we're absolutely thrilled. I'll have a lager. It's uh, OK, yeah. Paul, thank you and congratulations again.